Hey there, guys. Welcome back to Winning Wednesday. Are y'all ready for Winning Wednesday? I am Lisa L. McLean, the Certified Financial Educator, and I'm here with you on this episode of Winning with Lisa, where we win, we win, we win. And so I am so excited to share some new information with you today. So on last week, guys, I did not get a chance to um, do my broadcast of Winning with Lisa. Um, and so on the first Wednesday, we uh, cover life topics. And then on the second Wednesday, which is today, we cover finance topics. So today I'm giving you double for your trouble. We're going to double up, merge the two. And so we're going to be talking a, a life and finance topic today. And then join me back on the third Wednesday where we go into worship and word and we deal with our spirit. We talk about things to enhance our spirit and win in our spirit. And then on the fourth Wednesday of the month, we are talking business topics. So I am so excited to share some new uh, information with you today. And so today I'm going to be expanding on a topic that I posted about yesterday. So my Tuesday term on yesterday was endowment effect, endowment effect. And um, I'm not sure if anyone has ever heard of this phrase or this term, but um, I want to introduce it to you today. I believe it's going to be really, really good information um, and, and really help us to grow and develop um, in our life and also in our finances. So y'all ready to jump in with me today? Endowment effect, endowment effect. So I defined endowment effect on the Tuesday term yesterday, but I'll talk about it a little bit more here and just kind of give us an idea of what it is and um, why it is. So the endowment effect refers to an emotional bias. It's an emotional bias that causes individuals, causes us, to value an item or an object higher, um, oftentimes irrationally higher than its market value. So we're gonna get into the why that is, but that's what endowment effect is when we um, actually, it describes that circumstance when an individual places a higher value on an object um, that they already own, right? than the value they would place on that same object if they didn't own it. So, you know, and, and the emotional bias piece is where our emotions get involved when we actually have ownership or potential ownership of something and we esteem it higher, we, we give it more value, we perceive that it has more value than it really does or than the market actually will support. So the endowment effect can clearly be seen with items that have an emotional tie, some type of uh, symbolic significance to us. Um, research has identified two different triggers that are the main psychological reasons for the endowment effect. And so the first trigger is ownership and the second tr trigger is loss aversion. And we'll get into those two triggers in just a second and discuss how how they come about and when they when those triggers are um, enacted. So when we talk about understanding the endowment effect in behavioral finance guys, the endowment effect or is also called divestiture aversion. Divestiture aversion. And so what that means that we know what to invest is right we know what investment is but who knows what divesting is do you know what divest means it's basically the opposite when you're pulling out so investing you're, you're putting in and when you divest you're pulling out so the endowment effect is also called divestiture aversion meaning you're trying to avoid divesting you're trying to avoid pulling out and so it describes that circumstance like i said where an individual places a higher value on something that they already own um, than the value they would place on it if they didn't own it. 
and it, it doesn't support the, the market value for that item. And so this is typically triggered with items, again, that we have emotional or symbolic significance with. So we're going to talk about those two triggers. Remember, we, I said uh, ownership is a, is a trigger and loss aversion. And so with ownerships, studies have repeatedly shown that people will value something more or value it higher when they already own it versus uh, a similar item that they don't own. And much of the time, this, you know, is, is right in line with that adage, um, a bird in the hand, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And I talked about this very thing um, on my, gosh, I think it was March 16th, on my March 16th uh, YouTube broadcast of Winning with Lisa and where I was talking about that very thing, that very saying that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And I was challenging that idea um, because I believe it's very faulty. And so you can see here that with this, if this uh, trigger for endowment effect, this ownership trigger, it's also playing on that same concept that something you already have is worth more than something you don't already have. And so, um, Often it's not going to matter when it, when the endowment effect comes into play. It's not going to matter if that item you own was purchased or if it was given to you or if it's a, a potential purchase. You might not even own it yet and that endowment effect can still come into play and it still holds the same effect. So that's the first trigger with endowment effect. And the second trigger is... Uh, loss aversion. And that kind of ties to me, that kind of ties into that um, alternate uh, phrase for endowment effect, which was divestiture aversion. You're trying to avoid pulling out. And so with loss aversion, you're trying to avoid a loss, right? You're trying to avoid losing something. And when we look at investment, this is one of the main reasons that investors will, will tend to stick to um, a certain unprofitable asset or a trade um, as a prospect of investing at the prevailing market value because it, when it does not meet their perceptions of its value. So think about um, shoppers are far more sensitive to price increases than we are to price decreases, meaning we, we, we move, we, we, we have more sensitivity when a price um, increases, right? When we see like, like we're dealing with now with inflation, you know, we're very sensitive. We're very aware, very cognizant. It's affecting us more because of the price increases versus the price decreases. And so it leads shoppers to uh, prefer avoiding losses, Right rather than acquiring the actual equivalent gains. So that's what loss aversion is. And that's where it comes into play also with the investment or the stock market. When you are valuing a stock that you have more than you would a similar stock that could possibly perform better or is performing better, but because you own that, that stock currently, you place a higher value on it. And in my Tuesday term yesterday, I described it as a perceived increase in value due to ownership. This is good. And this is, this is going to be applicable, guys, not only in the area of finance and investing, but also in our life. Think about, you know, just things that we own that we value so much more than they actually might be um, worth to the market. Um, or think about that, that relationship that, <laughs> that you had and you had so much value on that thing, on the, on the relationship or on that person. And, you know, they just were not, or that relationship was just not right for you. Um, but you had, but you had such a, uh, perceived increase in value from that relationship or that person because it was yours, you know? And so, um, like I said, it can be applied. This, this concept of endowment effect can be applied in both life finances and investing. And I'm going to talk about some marketing, um, impacts as well. So let's jump to some examples. You're all ready for some good 
tasty, real life, relevant examples of where this endowment effect comes into play. So I talked about um, the investing example, um, but let me give you an example of a purchase of something that a lot of people may purchase. I, I don't know. Um, and this is the exa an example of loss aversion where this comes into play. And it's with a case of wine. So those who know me know that I am not um, a drinker. I've never um, drank alcohol, but I do understand that, you know, wine tastings are something that people love to do. You know, going and I guess I think it's called Napa Valley, where you can go and see the wineries and all this good stuff and the the um, the vineyards and stuff like that. So I want to use this as as my first example, where an individual obtains a case of wine um, at a at a relatively moder modest modest uh, price, right? Um, if an offer is made for that case of wine at a later date to acquire that wine for its current market value at a later date. And that market value is higher than the price that they paid for, that that person paid for it. Guess what? The endowment effect can compel that owner of that case of wine to refuse the offer. Why? Because they've increased the value of it because of their emotional tie to something that they own despite the monetary gains that would be realized by accepting the offer. That's what endowment effect can do. It can cause you to lose out on profits, you know, and that's in the case that you want to, of course, want to sell the item. Now I'm not, I'm not uh, condoning that, you know, you just selling stuff just to sell it and make a profit. But if you're in the market to actually sell something, and um, or buy something, that's when this endowment effect um, comes into play or, or can come into play. So um, the next example I wanna give you is the Facebook marketplace example, or you could even apply it to uh, Poshmark or Wish or OfferUp, all of these um, online platforms that we have for um, buying and selling items that individuals own. And so I know if you're like me and you have gone on any of these platforms to buy or sell items, I've sold many, many items. Um, it's been one of my streams of income actually um, that I've, um, I've developed over the years. But I know that you have probably seen the example of where you see something that you like. It might be something that you're specifically looking for but the owner has put this ridiculous price, just skyrocketed price, right, for that item online. And you're like, I am not going to pay that kind of money <laughs> for that. That is not even worth that. And you could find actually, you know, examples of similar or the same item being offered online for less. Why is that? It's because that owner has come into contact with <laughs> the endowment effect. They are increasing the value of that item more and higher, and uh, again, probably irrationally higher than it would cost or what would be valued at because of the endowment effect. Um, and so that's an example. That's a really, really good, relevant uh, real life example. So we talked about the, the stock example. Um, and I want to kind of do a little twist with the stock example and just share about, um, and this is a really good example. And it could, um, it could apply to stocks. It could apply to any uh, tangible thing that is given when a deceased relative um, passes on an asset to a family member. So if you think about the example of the stock, if this, um, this stock is given by um, a relative, then immediately it has sentimental value, right? And so it has that emotional time, that emotional connection. And um, even if that, that stock or stocks is, is not performing, you know, in line with, you know, your diversification goals or your tolerance, um, your risk tolerance, you may 
still keep that stock because of that emotional tie. And that's where the endowment effect is triggered. Um, it's that um, not, not only the loss aversion, you know, the, the fear of losing something um, or losing the value of something, but also the ownership, I own it now. And so you, you, uh, per, your perceived value of that item is more. Um, let's talk about, oh, this one is going to be good. Cause I know this, is this one, this example has definitely affected probably all of us at some point in our life, the car test drive and a 30 day free trial. How many of y'all, <laughs> how many of y'all have seen or experienced the car test drive or a 30 day trial subscription to something? Mm -hmm. Think about how the endowment effect comes into play with the car test drive. So you're already on the lot or, and I'll, I'll give the example too of when, you know, the dealer says, Hey, take the car for a couple of days and just, you know, see how it fits in your life. And you know, if you're, if it's good for your family and just how it feels with you, you know, try it on, try it on for size, <laughs> but with the car test drive. So they're giving you that opportunity to experience the luxury and the amenities, the, the features of the vehicle. Um, and a lot of times I think when we go to purchase a new vehicle um, or, or new used vehicle is what I, I'm a proponent of. Um, but when we go to purchase that additional vehicle, it's because the one that we have is not as good as it used to be. So think about you getting into that newer vehicle, that, that new used vehicle, and you're driving around and, and it's feeling good and it's purring just right and it's handling those curves just right, you know? And so they're giving you that ownership experience. That's when the endowment effect can come into play. And trust me, the car dealerships understand this. They know this. They know that if they let you get behind that wheel for a certain amount of time, or if they let you take that car home and you're pulling it into your, your garage and you're using the remote, um, uh, uh, door locks and remote car start and all the features that the car has, man, you're going to really have a hard time, not only giving it back <laughs> without buying it, but you may very well pay more for that vehicle, right? Because now you have a, a sense of ownership. So it's the value of it has, has actually increased. That's the endowment effect. Same thing with the 30 day free trial. So, you know, the, the, the cup, the company locks you in, they get your credit card or debit card information and say, Hey, you know, try it out for free. It's for the free, right? For the first 30 days. And if you don't love it, which we know you will, if you don't love it, cancel any time within the 30, 30 days and you pay nothing. How many of us have signed up for that? Many times, <laughs> multiple times, right? Um, and I, and one trick, one tip that I will share with you, what I do when I do want to try out something like that, um, I go to my calendar and I put in my calendar an alert, an alert to um, alert me before the 30 days is up. So around about the 25th day, don't do it on the 30th day because you might do end up getting distracted and forget. But about the 24th, 25th day, something like that, put an alert on your calendar to remind you to go and either cancel that subscription, right? Or, you know, make the decision, consider, you know, whether it's valuable enough to continue and to start paying for it. So that's a tip from Lisa L. McLean, the certified financial educator for you to help you so that you're not paying for those trials after the trial period has ended and it's not something that you really want. But again, two examples of uh, endowment effect. And so we can also see this with in the digital world, like I said, with um, subscriptions to different platforms. Um, and back to the car, car test uh, drive. That car test drive, According to, to statistics, let me get that out right. According to statistics, 
88.6% of potential uh, buyers are using this option and taking a test drive. You know, they know this. The research has shown the dealerships that, that those car test drive drives will increase, right? The possibility, the probability, and the potential of those prospective buyers to actually buy. And like I said, again, and buy at even a higher price than they would have had the endowment effect not come into play. It's that emotional attachment. Um, and so let's talk about, let's see, oh, collectibles. And we know that collectibles, antiques, even heirlooms um, can be very valuable, right? But oftentimes because of um, our perceived, um, the way we perceive them, the way we value them, you know, we place a higher value on those items, a classic car, for instance, or an heirloom that was passed down from your great, great Nana. <laughs> you know, we're going to place a higher value on those things than the market will actually support. So even if we were in a position where we were trying to sell, say like in an estate sale or something like that, where we're trying to get rid of these items, you know, a lot, oftentimes you'll have people, buyers coming and saying, you know, I want to purchase that and you're giving them the price and they're like, well, it's not worth that. And you're like, yes, it is. But really the market is like, no, it doesn't support that price, but you valued it so high because of that connection, that attachment and that emotional um, tie. And so I'll leave you with this, ex this last example and then we'll get into um, some of the other impacts and, and why this is dangerous and how we can um, help to um, ensure that we are um, kind of, you know, um, shielding ourselves in a way from, from the effect, from this in, endowment effect. But um, there was a professor who um, did an experiment. And so this professor did an experiment with his Monday, Wednesday class and then his Tuesday, Thursday class. So in the Monday, Wednesday class, he actually gave as a gift, a coffee mug to all the students in the Monday, Wednesday class. And the coffee mug was, um, it was uh, imprinted with the college logo, real nice, you know, nice looking coffee, coffee mug. But it, um, <laughs> it, you know, he didn't make a big deal about it or anything. It just gave them the coffee mug. The, the Tuesday, Thursday students did not get this coffee mug, right? So when it came down to um, placing a value on the coffee mug, when you ask the Monday, Wednesday students, you know, how much they would sell the coffee mug for, you know, if you sold this coffee mug, how much would you sell it for? And they gave a price. But then when you ask the Tuesday, Thursday students, how much would you be willing to pay for this coffee mug, the prices definitely greatly differ, right? And that's because um, the the people who, the students who purchased, I mean, who were given rather, who were given that coffee mug, they now have an attachment to it. They probably been, you know, using it in the mornings, drinking their coffee with it or their tea or, you know, whatever. And it's become a part of their life become a part of their routine. Um, or even if they're using it as a, um, like a, a decor, like if they have a little corner in their, in their, um, apartment or their home where they have their, you know, college paraphernalia, they could, it could be like a, 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 a decor type item. And so the ones, the students in that Tuesday, Thursday class are like, no, it's not worth that. And in fact, it's really not. Like you could go buy that coffee mug for, you know, a lot less than what, what the students who bought, who were gifted it in the Monday, Wednesday class are trying to sell it for. So that's another um, really great example. I thought that was a, a really neat experiment as well. Behavioral economists and behavior, behavior uh, finance scholars, they explain this allegedly irrational behavior as the result as the result rather of uh, a, a sort of cognitive bias right 
<laughs> connected to our mind, connected to our feelings, but it's a, a cognitive bias that warps our thinking. According to these, these theories, a rational individual should value, in the, say the case of that wine, should, should value the case of that wine in our example at exactly the current market price. Since they could purchase an identical case of wine at that price if they were to sell, right? So, you know, owners or even like in the, in the case of the 30 day trial and the free trial and the car test drive, owners or potential owners tend to overvalue something based on emotion, based on its perceived benefit. And this in turn can lead to poor financial decisions, poor investment decisions. Um, we could potentially pay too much due to the endowment effect. Um, or we could miss out on a great opportunity for a, a nice profit due to the loss aversion and the ownership triggers of the endowment effect. So I wanted to talk about just, you know, as business owners, how does this affect business owners? Um, yes, as entrepreneurs and, and business owners, you know, these are examples of, uh, you know, we could use the endowment effect, right? So that potential buyers, you know, who want to avoid loss or, you know, to help them feel a sense of ownership, we could we could um, prey on, so to speak, that endowment effect to help them decide to purchase. Um, my hope, my hope is that as business owners, as entrepreneurs, that we, yes, we value our products and services, but we do that at the market rate for comparable products and services um, while also honoring our value so you you know i'm a proponent of our worth so you know whatever that that value is while valuing ourselves and what we bring to the table to better people's lives um, but also to treat our customers treat our clients fairly and responsibly um, when it comes to pricing understanding that there are psychological forces at work when it comes to purchasing and selling. So I just want us to be responsible um, when it comes to that kind of thing. And, you know, think about the fact that, you know, we are all consumers. We might not all be business owners and entrepreneurs, but we're all consumers. And so we all have to walk that, that, um, that, that tightrope, so to speak, of, you know, deciding what's a good purchase, what's not a good purchase, what's a great value, what's what's the market value. And so um, make sure the product or the service uh, that you're buying or selling as either an, a consumer or as a business owner is worth its price or cost. So it goes both ways as a consumer and a business owner um, for purchasing and selling. Do your research. Do your research. <laughs> Do your research to see what the market is saying, what the market valuation um, is for those items. And don't just go off of your emotions as, as far as, um, you know, what price you should sell that item at or what price, you know, is, is worth buying it at um, when deciding to buy or sell. So I hope this information has been amazing. I know it, um, as I was preparing this information, I was like, oh gosh, this is gonna be good because it's just another, um, another concept that we can add to our, 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 our arsenal that will you know, help us to grow and help us to learn and, and, and elevate and evolve in life as we make decisions, with finances as we make decisions, and just so that we are aware that this even exists, you know? So again, thank you for joining me on this Winning Wednesday, on this episode of Winning with Lisa Ware. We win, we win, we win. And I will see you back here on every Wednesday 
on my winning and living golden channel. I'm so thankful, so grateful to be able to share information, tools, resources, knowledge with you to help you as entrepreneurs, small business owners, and aspiring small business owners so that you can succeed and walk the golden path of success in both business, life, and your finances. I'll see you back here next time. Lisa L. McLean, the Certified Financial Educator. See you guys later.